When he came to, it was well after dark, and he floated in moonlight on the surface of the ocean. His wings were ragged bars of lead, but the weight of failure was even heavier on his back. He wished feebly that the weight could be just enough to drag him gently down to the bottom and end it all. As he sank low in the water, a strange hollow voice sounded within him. There's no way around it. I am a seagull. I am limited by my nature. If I were meant to learn so much about flying, I'd have charts for brains. If I were meant to fly at speed, I'd have a falcon's short wings and live on mice instead of fish. My father was right. I must forget this foolishness. I must fly home to the flock and be content as I am, as a poor, limited seagull. The voice faded, and Jonathan agreed. The place for a seagull at night is on shore, and from this moment forth, he vowed he would be a normal gull. It would make everyone happier. He pushed wearily away from the dark water and flew toward the land, grateful for what he had learned about work-saving low-altitude flying. But no, he thought, I am done with the way I was. I am done with everything I learned. I am a seagull like every other seagull, and I will fly like one. So he climbed painfully to a hundred feet and flapped his wings harder, pressing for shore. He felt better for his decision to be just another one of the flock. There would be no more ties now to the force that had driven him to learn. There would be no more challenge and no more failure. And it was pretty just to stop thinking and fly through the dark towards the lights on the beach. Dark? The hollow voice cracked in alarm. Seagulls never fly in the dark. Jonathan was not alert to listen. It's pretty, he thought, the moon and the lights twinkling on the water, throwing out little beacon trails through the night, and all so peaceful and still. Get down! Seagulls never fly in the dark. If you were meant to fly, you'd have the eyes of an owl. You'd have charts for brains. You would have a falcon's short wings. There in the night, a hundred feet in the air, Jonathan Livingston Seagull blinked. His pain, his resolutions vanished. Short wings? A falcon's short wings. What a fool I've been. That's the answer. All I need is a tiny little wing. All I need to do is fold most of my wings and fly on just the tips alone. Short wings. He climbed to 2,000 feet above the Black Sea, and without a moment for thought of failure and death, he brought his four wings tightly into his body, left only the narrow swept daggers of his wingtips extended into the wind and fell into a vertical dive. The wind was a monster roar at his head, 70 miles per hour, 90, 120, and faster still. The wing strain now at 140 miles per hour, wasn't nearly as hard at it as it had been at 70. And with the faintest twist of his wingtips, he eased out of the dive and shot above the waters, a gray cannonball under the moon. He closed his eyes to slits against the wind and rejoiced, 140 miles per hour and under control. If I dive from 5,000 feet instead of two, I wonder how fast. His vows of a moment before were forgotten, swept away in that great swift wind, yet he felt guiltless, breaking the promises he had made himself. 
such promises are only for the gulls that accept the ordinary. One who has touched excellence in his learning has no need of that kind of promise. By sunup, Jonathan Gull was practicing again. From 5,000 feet, the fishing boats were specks in the flat blue water. Breakfast flock was a faint cloud of dust motes circling. He was alive, trembling ever so slightly with delight, proud that his fear was under control. Then without ceremony, he hugged in his forewings, extended his short angled wingtips, and plunged directly toward the sea. By the time he passed 4,000 feet, he had reached terminal velocity. The wind was a solid beating wall of sound against which he could move no faster. He was flying now straight down at 214 miles per hour. He swallowed, knowing that if his wings unfolded at that speed, he'd be blown into a million tiny shreds of seagull. But the speed was power. The speed was joy, and the speed was pure beauty. He began his pull out at a thousand feet, wingtips thundering and blurring in that gigantic wind. The boat and the crowd of gulls tilting and growing meteor fast directly in his path. He couldn't stop. He didn't know yet how to turn at that speed. Collision would be instant death. And so he shut his eyes. It happened that morning, then, just after sunrise, that Jonathan Livingston Seagull fired directly through the center of breakfast flock, ticking off 212 miles per hour, eyes closed, in that great roaring shriek of wind and feathers. The gall of fortune smiled upon him this once, and no one was killed. <laughs> 